Hello everyone, so today we're going to talk about the anatomy, the topography, borders, vasculature, function and clinical relevance of the thymus. So you can see some pictures, this is what you will see during dissections, this is what you will see during autopsy of the thymus. So it is of a pinkish grey colour, it's soft, lobulated on its surface and it consists of two lobes, one left and right and they are connected by a ligament. It's surrounded by a fibrous capsule and this capsule will penetrate into the thymus. The lobes are further subdivided by um, connective tissue into lobules and what's very interesting is the phenomenon called thymic involution. It is an age-related phenomenon where, in simple words, in a child the thymus is the biggest and in puberty it will start to atrophy and in an adult it will be a much smaller organ. And in elderly it's barely identified as an organ. And I'll show you more pictures. So here is a chest x-ray of a child and this uh, triangular opacity which extends from the mediastinum to the right upper thorax is actually the thymus. This sign is called thymic cell and it's a, it's a physiological um, finding in a chest x-ray of a child but in an adult x-ray you cannot see this. Um, here we have a microscopic picture again of a thymus in a child. You can see this darker peripheral uh, area which is the cortex and here are densely packed immature T lymphocytes. These T lymphocytes will later migrate into the medulla, this lighter area, where they will mature. Um, you can see that in an adult thymus there is a lot of adipose tissue this is fat tissue which has replaced most of the cortex and you can also see here in an autopsy of an adult thymus how this whole structure is composed of adipose tissue in a microscopic picture you can see this uh, structure which is called hazel corpuscle. It is found in the medulla and it has an onion-like structure um, and it consists of uh, eosinophilic reticular cells which uh, produce cytokines that are necessary for the maturation of uh, T lymphocytes. So, where is the thymus? It's in the mediastinum, which is the central area in the thorax between the lungs. And more specifically, it is in the superior mediastinum, and it's the most anterior structure in there. It lies below the manubrium, which is part of the sternum, and it is uh, it sits on the pericardium and it's separated by the great uh, from the great vessels by layers of fascia in a child it can reach uh, in the neck and it lies in front and sides of the trachea behind the sternohyoids and the sternothyroid muscles it can also reach up to the thyroid gland, but in an adult it's just a small structure behind the sternum. And finally, the left and right borders of the thymus are the lungs from each side. So, vasculature. Um, blood supply comes from uh, small branches which originate from the internal thoracic arteries, as you can see here. The venous drainage uh, is usually into the left bronchiocephalic vein and uh, the internal thoracic veins. And the lymphatic drainage is uh, in um, returns to multiple groups of nodes at one or more of the following locations. So either along the internal thoracic arteries, parasternal uh, nodes like here, or the nodes which are in the tracheal bifurcation called tracheobronchial or in the root of the neck. 
So what is the function? The main function is the maturation and differentiation of the T lymphocytes. So from the time you're conceived until you reach puberty, your thymus gland is very active. It serves for both the immune and endocrine systems. And what's an endocrine system? It's the system that makes the hormones, which are the body's chemical messengers. And to understand the thymus immune system, you really need to know what's the difference between the two white blood cells, what's the difference between T cells and B cells. So T comes from thymus because this is where they mature. And these cells, they help to fight off the body's foreign invaders, such as bacteria, viruses, and toxins. And they can also identify and attack cancer cells, which is very important for the clinical years. B lymphocytes, B comes from bone marrow, uh, this is where they mature. And the difference is that they produce proteins, which are called antibodies. And these antibodies are used to destroy specific invaders. So, the T lymphocytes are called by the first responders and defenders of the immune system when they need extra help. So, they are made in the bone marrow, and which is the spongy tissue within your bones. And when the T cells are still young or immature, they will travel through the bloodstream into the thymus. And there they will mature eventually into different types of um, cells. We have uh, cytotoxic cells, T cells, which are responsible for killing directly um, infected cells. Then you have the helper T cells, which are responsible to get the B cells to make antibodies. And also they prime other T cells and they make them to attack the foreign invaders. And then you also have the regulatory T cells. These are really important. They play the role of police and they are um, responsible to suppress any B cells or even T cells that are mistakenly are harming the body. So before I explain what's positive and negative selection I want to say a few words about the MHC proteins. So all body cells except from the red blood cells they have class 1 MHC proteins on their surface which um, MHC actually stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex and is part of the extracellular matrix. Class II MHC proteins, molecules, are found on special cells, the antigen-presenting cells, such as macrophages. Um, the cells that need um, MHC proteins, actually, I'm so sorry, I wanted to say cells need the MHC proteins in order to present their own antigens on the surface. And why is that important? It's important because if the T cell binds on an MHC complex which presents self-antigen, then the T cell understands that, oh, this is my own cell, so I won't attack it. But if a T cell will bind on a MHC protein which presents a foreign antigen or an antigen from a tumor cell, then the T cell will recognize that this cell is unhealthy or it is foreign. So it will start an immune response and it will eliminate the pathogen or the tumor cell. Um, and how does the T cell recognize if it is self or non-self. So this happens in the thymus through a two-stage selection process and you can see it in the left picture. So the first uh, stage is the positive selection. What happens is that a T-cell is exposed into MHC complexes and if they bind to MHC complex then this is good, they will survive. So that means that they can recognize what it is. But if they don't bind, then it will die. So what, from the positive selection, you get T cells that recognize MHC complexes. 
In the second stage, you have the negative selection, during which the T cells will be um, presented uh, some uh, self antigen, um, self antigens, and if they recognize the self antigen and they bind very strongly in on it that means that they will attack it and they shouldn't so they will they will uh, die by apoptosis but if they don't bind strongly on the self antigen they will survive and complete their maturation and actually only two percent of the t cells go through this selection and survive so after the after this, the some hormones that are produced by the thymus will complete the maturation. You have we have the thymopoietin and the thymulin, which are hormones that are involved in the process where the T cells are get are getting turned into different types of disease fighters that we mentioned previously, like the cytotoxic T-cells, helper T-cells, regulatory T-cells. You have the thymosine, which is a hormone which boosts the immune system's response, and it can also stimulate the um, other hormones that control the growth. And you also have the thymic humoral factor. These hormones increase the immune system's response to viruses. And a few words for the clinical relevance of thymus. So, we have the D. George syndrome, uh, which is partly because of the deficiency in T lymphocytes. But why does this occur? Because during the development of the fetus, the embryological structures from which the thymus arises, they fail to develop. And that leads to thymus aplasia, that means that the organ is not present, or ha thymus hypoplasia, that means that the organ tissue is decreased because of the decreased cell number. And the lack of allocation for T lymphocyte development, that is the thymus, means that the affected children have reduced or absent T lymphocytes, and thus they are very susceptible to infections, even infections by fungi and parasites. They're very frequent and severe. The other uh, topic I'd like to talk about is autoimmune disease. So what happens? During the negative selection, the T cells, which are dangerously, um, have a dangerous high affinity for self antigens, they are deleted. But if this process relies upon the expression of self antigens inside the thymus, situations that compromise the expression of self antigens um, will lead to the development of autoimmunity. Because indeed, in a rare group of patients who develop multiple autoimmune disorders, there is a defect in the autoimmune regulator. Um, there is a defect in the autoimmune regulator gene which controls the thymic expression of the of these self proteins and when the gene malfunctions there is reduced expression of self proteins in the thymus and thus the t cells never learn how to recognize them and when they are free to circulate in the blood and bump into self antigens then they recognize them as foreign and they start to attack them so Thank you so much for listening. I really hope that this video was helpful and I wish you good luck with your exams. Thanks.